All right, all praise to the Most High, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rahaha Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, pushing his doctrine of truth to the nation of Israel, who were scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, pursuant to the curses of Deuteronomy. All right. The title of this lesson is The Lord is Going to Remember You During Jacob's Trouble, Big Judah and Big Levi, and the rest of you self proclaim false prophets or biblical scholars. Pride yourselves on having much knowledge because you're reading all these books when in actuality you don't know anything because. You don't have the basic foundation or the understanding of the Bible itself. Because if you did, you wouldn't be running around talking about there won't be any Jacob's trouble for the Israelites. Okay? Let me tell you, man, our troubles have just begun. And you think slavery was something, and it was a brutal time, not to downplay it at all. Okay? It was one of the most horrific times in in our lives, okay, because many of us were there in our previous lives, okay, if you can receive that, but regeneration, spirit regeneration is another story for, for another lesson for another time, okay, but yes, that was a, a very horrific period, but the Heavenly Father is saying that Jacob's trouble is going to be worse, it's going to be worse, so if that's the case, then it would behoove you to prepare yourself spiritually so you can endure until the end. Okay? Anyway, I want to get started with the first scripture. And this is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 30, verse 7. And it reads, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble but he shall be saved out of it, okay? For it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck and I will burst thy bonds and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. Now, this is a very important part of the uh, verse. Strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. So that those strangers represent the heathen nations, and particularly Esau, Edom. We know he's in concert with the heathens, the other heathen nations. You know, they, they play their part and their role in afflicting us. Okay? The last time I checked, Esau, Edom still has his foot on our necks. We're of the hopeful elect. So according to you or by your rationale, we shouldn't be going through anything. We shouldn't be afflicted. Everything should be, uh, everything should be a-okay. We shouldn't have any problems. All right. We should have been delivered out of it. But no, Jacob's trouble hasn't even started yet. Okay. It hasn't even started yet. And we know that because like one of the apostles said, you're still able to go to work and you're still able to turn on TV and sit down and enjoy a glass of wine and not see any death and destruction. I mean, all that stuff is, is pretty much happening on foreign soil, okay, right now. But it's going to come to Babylon the Great, okay? Not to say we don't have crime here in Babylon the Great and homicides and, you know, all other types of uh, 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 crimes and such. But, um, yeah, this isn't Jacob's trouble yet. And nor have we been, been saved out of anything. All right. We're still being served to our to our uh, oppressors, to Esau, Edom. Right. He's still serving himself or they are still serving themselves on us. But they shall serve the Lord, their God and David, their king, whom I will raise up unto them. Has that happened yet? Because this is all talking about the same time frame. Therefore, fear thou not, O my, my servant Jacob, saith the Lord, neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar 
and thy seed from the land of their captivity. Now, wait a minute. When did this happen? Big Judah, big Levi. When were we saved from our captivity, from the land of our captivity? Because as far as I know, the last time I checked, we're still here dwelling in the land of our captivity. Okay, all 12 tribes. Now, granted, a lot of our brothers and sisters are scattered abroad, but the vast majority of the Hebrew Israelites, pursuant to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 50, verse 33, are going to be dwelling here in Babylon the Great. Again, all 12 tribes. Then it goes on to say, And Jacob shall return and shall be in rest and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. Wait a minute. This is talking about the same time period. It's referencing Jacob's trouble. Have we returned to Israel? No, we still got the small hatters, the imposters living in our land. We're not at rest. We're not quiet. All right. Many of us are living in fear. Now, not those of us of the hopeful elect. But um, yeah, this is this is not talking about the kingdom of heaven. This is what it's referencing here. OK, when Jacob returns, the kingdom of heaven is going to be established on this earth. How can you not see that? How can you not understand that as you self-proclaim biblical scholars? I mean, this is pretty basic, man. This is as basic as addition and subtraction. Not to say that the anything in the scriptures is basic by any stretch of the imagination. But what I mean by saying that is that it's very, very clear. It's very straightforward. You can't mess that up. This is referencing a specific time frame with respect to the end of the world. And anyone should be able to see it, but especially those of us who are endowed with the Holy Spirit that have the spiritual eyes and spiritual ears to see and understand what we're reading, okay? I guess um, you brothers are missing in that department, Big Judah and uh, Big Levi, because yeah, you this, this whole doctrine about there being no, no Jacob's trouble We've already lived through it. Uh, we're not going to have to go through anything. That is utterly preposterous, man. Okay? And you're misleading your viewers, your followers, for lack of a better word, your, your, your church. That's what I should say. You're, you're, you're mis misleading them. But why is that so important? It's just a difference in doctrine. It's just a slight variation. No, the Heavenly Father wants to be worshipped in spirit and in truth. He is all about truth. All right? And if you're not speaking according to the Holy Scriptures, then guess what? You're a false prophet. You're telling lies. Let's get that. Because you silly niggas need to be reminded of that. You need to be reminded that you need to follow what's written in the Holy Scriptures. Now, Heavenly Father is not going to write something for us to follow and then allow you to just come along and say, hey, you know what? There's no Jacob's trouble. I don't know what you're talking. We already went through ours. No, nah, man. No. Nah. The book of Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to what? To this word. What word? The Holy Scriptures. It is because there is no light in them. And you dumb, silly Negroes, you biblical scholars, you prophets, have no light in you. You have no oil. Okay? Because you can't realistically open up the scriptures, read what I just read in Jeremiah chapter 30, and conclude that, there's, that we've already been through Jacob's trouble when this is clearly saying... That not only have we not gone through Jacob's trouble, but the kingdom of heaven hasn't been established on this earth yet. So where, where does that leave us in prophecy? Well, at the cusp of Jacob's trouble, right? If we're not in it, we're very, very close to being in it. There's talk of the, the karagma, the MOTB, okay? Plagues, you're starting to see more plagues on this earth. Wars and rumors of wars. You got the Russia and Ukraine thing going on. How can you not see that? It leads me to believe that you, you cats are false prophets and you were hired. You're agents, more importantly. 
your agents, which means you were installed by Esau Edom to intentionally mislead the flock so you can be led to the slaughter. Because that's exactly what's going to happen if you Israelites keep on listening to these doctrines of devils, big Judah and big Levi, because they don't know what the hell they're talking about. You explain this, big Judah. Explain this, man. Okay? Therefore, fear thou not, O my, my servant Jacob, saith the Lord, neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar and thy seed from the land of thy captivity. Guess what? This is during Jacob's trouble here. And this hasn't happened yet. Next scripture. I'm beating the dead horse, but for good reason. Because you can't get it through you silly Israelites' thick skulls. So you got to just keep going over stuff. You're still not going to understand. Matthew chapter 24, verse 13. But he that endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Saved out of what? Jacob's trouble. All right? The end hasn't come yet. All right? We're still anticipating, all right, with excitement, much excitement, the coming of the MOTB. Because we know that's the end. All right? That's the last prophet, one of the last prophecies that has to be fulfilled. And after that, you know, then uh, Esau, Edom's going to lift up that standard, right? And then that's when the Heavenly Father is going to send down Yahweh Shai and Michael the angel to save us out of it, okay? Because we refuse to bow a knee to the image of Baal. And what is that image? What's part of that image? The MOTB in Revelation chapter 13, man, okay? So that's what we're going to be saved out of, all right? This is the moment of temptation that this is referring to. All right. The end. The end. All right. This is the epitome of the end. OK. This is the, the grand finale. I like to refer to it as. OK. So no one's been saved out of anything because it hasn't even started yet. So how in the hell are we saved from it? Now, granted, just because it says we're going to be saved from it doesn't mean we're not going to go through anything in Jacob's trouble because this is saying the end because Jacob's trouble has to have a beginning, right? It's going to have a beginning. It's going to have a middle section and it's going to have an end. All right. Like all time periods, right? Short or long. It's going to have a beginning, a middle period and an end. We're going to be in the beginning and the middle toward the end, and then at the last minute, the Heavenly Father is going to lift up that standard and save us, okay, in dramatic fashion, the same way he did in Egypt, okay? Now, this is the second exodus, so why should this be any different? It's going to be a much more dramatic uh, deliverance, okay, because this is going to be on a worldwide scale, but primarily here in Babylon the Great, all right? Anyway, next scripture. Let's go to the book of Daniel, chapter 12. All these scriptures and these knuckleheads are still running around talking about there won't be any Jacob's trouble. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. Notice how this is not saying Michael standing up for all you heathens, all nations. No, he's standing up for the children of thy people, the Israelites. Okay, but the Lord loves everybody. Jesus loves everybody. Well, his name is Yahawashai. Okay, that was a slip. I'm just mocking you, you silly Christians out there. Okay, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since. There was a nation even to that same time. And at that time, Thy people shall be delivered. What time? When that standard or when that when the enemy comes in like a flood. OK, the standard is going to be raised. All right. And then Michael's going to come to the rescue along with Yahweh led by Yahweh by way of the chariots. OK, that's when we're going to be delivered. 
So where have we seen Michael, the angel, stand up for the nation of Israel? Tell me, big Judah, big Levi, when have you seen Michael, the angel, stand up for the children of Israel? Well, they haven't had to yet. Okay, now slavery was our punishment. We had to go through that. Okay, and we're still being punished. Right? We're still being punished to this day. The Heavenly Father said he's going to save a remnant, and that's what he did. He's going to awaken and quicken a remnant. That's what you see today. Okay? And when we're all sealed with the name of the Heavenly Father and his only begotten Son, well, guess what? Then the end shall come. Let's get that. Matthew 24, 13. But he that endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Wow. Not looking good for you false prophets out there. Let's go to the book of uh, Isaiah, chapter 59, verse 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. And this is the point. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Who? Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. Okay, because he's going to come down with great wrath, pursuant to the book of Revelation chapter 14, if I'm not mistaken. Or is it 12? All right, but anyway, he's going to come down with great wrath. Okay, at which time the Heavenly Father is going to have to lift up a standard to save his chosen people. Okay, and how, he's, how, is, he, how is he going to achieve that? He's going to achieve that by sending Yahawashai and the whole host of heaven's angels to deliver us by way of the chariots okay so we have to be in the thick of things in order to be delivered we're going to be saved out of something okay we weren't saved out of anything yet because we really haven't seen anything outside of slavery okay you've had isolated incidents of us being killed okay us being oppressed i mean that's that's not so isolated, but, you know, the brutality sort of diminished over the years since slavery. OK, or maybe it's just not on such a wide scale as it once was. All right. But nonetheless, we weren't saved out of anything. OK, so I don't understand how anybody that knows anything about the Holy Scriptures can conclude that Jacob's trouble already took place or it took place during the time of our captivity. We're still in captivity. All right? I just read it. The Lord is going to save us or deliver us from the land of our captivity. If you're still here, you haven't been delivered yet, you morons. I'm tired of you knuckleheads, man. I really am. Because you're so proud. I hear you cats talking and putting up your memes. Talking about you don't like my site, you know, stay off of it. I mean, I don't, I don't go near your site, but I do read your memes, and 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 uh, you, you really, um, you're exhibiting your ignorance, you know, with your lack of knowledge of the Bible. Okay, you're posting your little memes about this and about that, like you really know what you're talking about when. Man, you're leading thousands of people, literally. You're, you're, th you're literally leading thousands of people to the slaughter because of your ignorance. So that's what burns me up. You know, it's okay. Well, it's not okay. It's not okay at all. But it's even worse to be proud and be ignorant. Okay, you are proud, ignorant Israelites that don't know your ass from a hole in the ground. And you're so proud... That you can't even see the error of your ways. You can't even see that you're devoid of understanding on very, very basic scriptures, man. Which brings to mind the Heavenly Father put in your minds very, very strong delusion. Okay? And if that's the case, which it seems to be, you're slated for destruction. 
And that's where I said the Heavenly Father is going to visit you during Jacob's trouble. All right, both you knuckleheads, big Judah, big Levi, and, and anybody else that's, that's uh, speaking that same foolishness, that, that devil's doctrine or doctrine of devils. All right, there's absolutely no way in the world we've been delivered from Jacob's trouble. It hasn't even started yet. So what the hell are you clowns talking about? You need to humble yourselves. You need to pray for more wisdom and understanding. And stop being preoccupied with reading so many other books. I mean, that's like me saying, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and read. I'm going to study trigonometry. I'm going to study calculus. I'm going to study geometry later for addition and subtraction. I don't need the foundation. When in actuality, if you don't have the foundation, you're not deeply rooted in the basics Okay, of mathematics, such as, you know, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. You're going to fail. Because that's the type of system or subject that builds upon itself. Right? You're not going to understand the complex aspects of mathematics if you don't understand the simple, uh, the, the fundamentals. You can't walk before you crawl. OK, and that's exactly what all you false prophets out there are constantly doing. You know, you're trying to walk before you crawl. You've been in this truth for years and you're sticking to your guns that there won't be any Jacob's trouble. All right. And that's not the only flaw in your doctrine. You also don't believe that there is uh, more than one type of Gentile when the, the scriptures clearly state that there is. In fact, the original word Gentile referenced scattered Israelites. And you didn't know that. You didn't know that because you're too preoccupied with reading these other bullshit books. OK, and I say they're bullshit books because the vast majority of the information in those books contradict what's written in the Holy Scriptures. Now, if you got a contradiction going on, OK, and these books should complement each other. They should reinforce and support each other. OK, one shouldn't be saying one thing and the other book shouldn't be saying another, because if that's the case, then somebody's lying. Somebody's not telling the truth somehow, some shape or form, right? The Heavenly Father said he was going to quicken us and give us the 100% truth of his holy scriptures because that is what is going to be, you know, our uh, a bridge to salvation after we, you know, of course, establish our faith and our belief in our Lord, the Heavenly Father and his only begotten Son, all right? I mean, that's just the way it is. You believe in the Heavenly Father, you believe in His only begotten Son, and you got to believe the doctrine. If you're a man and you, you've been blessed with the understanding to be able to go out there and teach, then that's what you got to do. So the Lord's not going to have us teaching His Word. He's not going to have us teaching 25% truth. He's not going to have us teaching 10% truth or 90% truth. No, he's going to endow us with his Holy Spirit so we understand the entire Holy Scriptures, put together the doctrine, all right, so we can save ourselves. So we can, do, and I'm not saying we're doing it ourselves. What I'm saying is this is the way you're going to be delivered, okay? Having been found with no guile in your mouth, no deception, no lies, no deceit, right? And having worshipped the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son in spirit and in truth. That's the only way you're going to be saved out of this. But if you don't, the Heavenly Father is going to number you to the sword. Okay? And you're not going to be saved out of D Jacob's trouble. I don't care how much you claim to believe and how much you claim to read the scriptures and claim to have all this kind of faith. If you're not teaching the right doctrine, you're going to be destroyed. It's that simple. And if y'all following Big Judah and Big Levi and the rest of those knuckleheads who know nothing about the scriptures, then you're going to be destroyed right along with them. All right. Anyway, with that said, I want to say all praise to the Most High Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Rahaha Kodash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, pushing this doctrine of truth. To the nation of Israel who was scattered throughout the four corners of the earth.
100% truth. All right, until next time, Shalom.